So this is a video response to Ian Juby's first video, The Dark Side of Darwin. Apparently there's going to be another one, but this one was more than enough that it needed to be addressed because it amazed me the dumb level of argumentation and just the stupidity um, that went into it because it's very interesting um, how he doesn't really believe what he's saying. I, I can't imagine that he does. I, I, I can't because some of the stuff is just so basic logically that anyone could address it. But let's move forward and see what he came up with. We're going to venture into areas which I know that my evolutionary friends do not like to venture into. And to be honest, I do not like to discuss the things we are about to discuss either. But it is sadly important. The anti-creationists will vehemently try to deny the connections we are about to reveal. And in fact, they will attempt to twist around these dark issues in a convoluted attempt to blame the Christians and creationists. We are going to visit the dark side of Darwinism. If you don't like talking about it, then why are we talking about it? This is your YouTube channel, but I'm going to ignore co the cognitive dissonance because, well, common sense, what's that for? Um, but you mentioned that you don't enjoy talking about it, and evolution uh, proponents, I'm not going to say evolutionists, I don't like that word, um, don't like talking about this, but I have no problem talking about it because I can address the issue honestly. But you say that evolutionists will try to blame this on creationism and Christianity. That's a straw man, because I'm not going to do that, and I don't know anyone that does do that. And that's mainly because what you're going to get to, which is a lot of eugenics and Hitler, has a lot of different social impacts. And when you actually look into the issue and apply logic, which you don't seem to do a good job of, then you actually see what's happening instead of this really fluffy rhetoric. And that's all this is, Ian. It's just rhetoric. We will reveal and examine the negative impact this theory has on everything from social issues to proper medical and scientific research. Now, I want to be very clear to my evolutionary friends. I am not saying that believing in evolution makes one evil. On the contrary, it is the human heart which is inherently evil, not a person's particular world view. Now, there have been many atrocities uh, carried out in the name of Christ, for example. Now, that has nothing to do with whether or not the Christian faith is righteous or correct. People will use any excuse at hand to justify wicked deeds. I'd like to say that I'm shocked by his intellectual honesty. He understands that it's not ne it doesn't necessarily follow that you have negative views that have been associated with your viewpoint as a result of you having that viewpoint. And I'd say that that's true. Look at all the Christians. There are plenty of pro-evolution, pro-choice, pro-gay marriage Christians. But that doesn't mean that Christianity, at least in the United States, is not the biggest force against those things. That being said, it's very interesting that Ian blames all of this evil stuff on the evilness of the human heart. I don't understand why people who are so pro-life, you know, um, and, and so, you know, this life is sacred and all that, think that the things that are living are just evil. That, that seems like such a large amount of cognitive dissonance to me. But that's not the focus. I want you guys to remember this clip where he says that this guilt by association game is ridiculous because he should just stop the video here and say that, well, my entire argument is irrelevant. Of course he doesn't, and we continue. If a person goes on a shooting rampage and claims that Jesus Christ told them to do it, they would find difficulty justifying their claim. Seeing as how Christ certainly did not lead with such an example, and Jesus even taught to turn the other cheek when someone strikes you. However, 
if evolution and survival of the fittest is true, then such a person can easily justify their actions. After all, it is only survival of the fittest. We are only animals, and whether or not an animal uses tooth and claw to kill another animal, or if that animal uses a gun to kill, what difference does it make? Within the Darwinian paradigm, how is mass murder then wrong? Your worldview has consequences. It amazes me that we went from intellectual honesty to this crap. The first thing that I want to remark upon is that it's this war of worldviews between evolution and Christianity. First off, neither of those is worldviews. I mean, I'm sorry, so there are going to be people that disagree with me, but by the diversity of Christians that I've met, I can't say that Christianity alone is a worldview. There's so many other things that go into it, and it's obvious that evolution's not a worldview. Evolution is a scientific theory that explains the biodiversity of the animals, the animal, plant, bacteria, etc., species in the world. How, how is that a worldview? Ian, that's a description of reality. You can't, and this is the problem, is he says there's consequences to evolution. There aren't consequences in, in terms of ethical action. There really aren't, because it's a description of reality. The ethical consequences come from how we reason about that description of reality. It's like me looking at the sun and saying, oh, you know, this is bright yellow. I should put on sunglasses. No, it's my perception is what's causing me to put on sunglasses. It's not the fact that the sun is so bright and so intense with the photons it's emitting. I mean, that's just a description. My action is based on my perception. And that's how political and social issues work. This is not, you know, this should be transparent. But also, it's so dishonest to juxtapose Christianity and evolution, because Francis Collins a Christian. You know, what about uh, Kenneth Miller? You know, this is ridiculous. I mean, there are, the majority of Christians accept evolution. So how are they opposing worldviews? They're not even worldviews to begin with, but how are they opposing and yeah, I agree ideas have consequences, but this seems like a really big stretch. Now, if you think my connection is a stretch, then you should be reminded or informed of precisely what mass murderers have said. Really? This is who we're taking a cue from on what a proper course of ethical action is. Mass murderers. I mean, I'm not going to go through the entire clip because the level of idiocy that went into this is mind-boggling to me. I mean, it's obvious that he must be dishonest because I can just turn around and go, well, let's see what the Crusades said, or let's look at the religious wars, or let's look at the persecution of gays, or etc., etc. This has nothing to do with the truth of the proposition, and it's not the direct... Con you can you're not demonstrated that these people are the direct consequence of evolution. Like, he brings up Jeffrey Dahmer, who, again, says brings up this classic fallacy. Evolution does not negate God. It doesn't even negate Christianity. It only describes what happened. You see, there's science and there's religion. And religion has to conform to science for it to be true. Science doesn't have to do anything because science is, by definition, a description of reality. But this amazes me. You, really, you think that the people to take cue on, on, on this issue, are serial killers. I mean, there are plenty of Christian serial killers. Why don't you mention them? Can't, didn't you just conclude earlier that you can't base it on what nutbags say about the worldview? I mean, this is ridiculous, and I find no reason to address it. Now, he goes on in the video. I'm not going to do direct quotes, but he tries to connect eugenics to Darwinism. And again, I've demonstrated this is a straw man because you can't say anything about ethical implications of scientific theories. You can't say that that impacts, that's a result of the scientific theory. That's a result of the ethical reasoning about that theory. It's outside of science. And I agree that all scientific discoveries end up having an impact. And that's something that we should consider very closely. But that doesn't do anything, that doesn't mean that the bad things that come from discoveries 
are a result of the discovery itself. They're a result of how we use the discovery. And that's a weakness of humans. He goes on to interview a bunch of people to make the spurious claim that Hitler believed in Darwin. And Hitler was a political opportunist. He used the Christian church to his advantage. He used, um, you know, Lutherans. He used Catholics. He used, you know, the belt buckles for, um, you know, Nazis said, Gott means uns, you know, God is with us. But look at what he wrote in Mein Kampf. He said, Who, whoever would dare to raise a profane hand against the highest image of God among his creatures would sin against the bountiful creator of this marvel and would collaborate in the expulsion from paradise. Does that sound like someone who's an atheist or who believes in evolution? Personally, I don't know what Hitler's religious beliefs were. Goebbels said that he was very religious but very anti-Christian, and there's been a whole spectrum of things. But it doesn't matter, because he was a political opportunist. The idea of eugenics that you bring up is a little bit far-fetched, and here's the reason why. Eugenics was, again, using Darwinian theory to bolster Victorian views of racial hierarchies. I mean, people still try to do that. Fringe Element still tries to do it. But this is an irrelevant argument, and I don't really understand why you're going through it. I'm not going to go through the rest of the, you know, 30 minutes, because it's basically the same tripe, except he's just having other people say it instead of us having to listen to him say it. But does he have an original point? Can he actually acknowledge that these that Christianity and evolution aren't opposing viewpoints? That, you know, that neither of them nece necessarily dictate these extreme consequences. There are consequences to Christianity and to belief, and there are consequences to accepting science as your go-to ideology. If it is an ideology, I don't think it is, but it's a good word to describe what I'm getting at. That's a good conversation, but you're not having it honestly. And that's my issue, and that's my response. Thanks, guys.